Yep. Uh, I guess, Coach, just uh, going out to, to Fargo to take on North Dakota State, second ranked team in the country and, and the best defensive team in the country in, in FBS. Yeah, the exciting part is I get to fly this time. <laughs> and now I want to tell you, you just said it all. We're going to play a great football team. Um, weather's going to be nice inside, that's for sure. They're very, very sound on defense. Their offense is very, you know what it is, is after being three years in the league, they they are exact, you know, who's a, was it Dennis Green said, uh, where's Jim? He's the Arizona guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they are who they, they are. are. They are who they thought they were. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dennis Green was his ramp before. That's my ramp before the game now, not after the game, because you know exactly who they are. They're going to pound you. They're going to play action you. They're going to get. They're going to throw the ball a little bit. Eleven personnel. Third downs. They're going to throw the ball. They get in third and five situations. Predominantly an all pass team. Or not, they just want to take the ball and shove it down your throat and play action passion on defense. Um, watching their kids, you know. And please let me finish my whole sentence here. Don't edit this. There's not a flash star guy. But they're a star defense because they're all so fundamentally sound. They're all play well together. They're all in the right place, the right gaps. They do a great job of tackling. They're fundamentally sound with their shoulders. You know when you turn, you don't turn on the film. Like for example, Illinois State last week, you turn that film on that corner, you go, "Wow, he's he's really good." This no one wows me, but their defense wows me. If that makes sense. It seemed like last year's game with them, a lot like this past weekend's game with Illinois State, that first half and then the second half, tell of two stories. Is it psychological? Is it just draining on your team? Just explain the difference of the two halves. What have you seen or learned so far? Well, it finally, I finally realized what I learned. I actually, I took another coach and I actually told him, I told the team this yesterday, that if he would have told me this uh, on Saturday, I could have slept for two days. Because I've been trying to figure that out. And uh, what it really is, is because uh, it's real simple. Is at the halftime of our football game, absolutely everything was equal. The score, the production, the points, the yardage, all the little statistics that you look at was perfectly even. And what happened at halftime is <clears throat> we hope to win and they expect it to win. And we're not gonna change until we expect to win. And uh, I think that resonated with the players. I hope it resonated with the players. Um, that we need to start expecting to win and not hoping to win. Because we were right in there in that game with them. When you're when you're hoping to win, is that something where maybe I know I you overthink I stuff? No, not you. I, but I can't answer that question if, if because I don't know that answer. I never hope to win. I expect to win, and and just been my makeup, just my body type, my brain, all the asshole ones I got as a kid. I don't know what it was, but when the score zero zero, I start every game expecting to win. That's why I'm so depressed after games, and depressed on Sundays, and slowly getting out of it on Mondays because I have to do a great job of teaching and coaching on Tuesdays. But I don't, can't answer that question because I don't hope I win. I expect to win, and that's why I'm so disappointed and frustrated when we don't win. And I don't mean that any other way than it's called competition. You know, I get pissed when my wife beats me at checkers. <laughs> that's not a joke. When you look at North Dakota State, I mean, is there, what, what, what will the Bears attack? Uh, offensively on that on that defense and and what can they when you what are you, you going to try to do? <laughs> well, we have a great game plan. I got great offensive coaches. And I'm not going to answer that question because I guarantee you, Chris probably watches the media report. So hey, let me tell Dan Lucy what we're going to do. <laughs> so Chris has a jump head start on it. We're going to go empty quads the whole game. Okay. <laughs> God bless the question. <laughs> Now, when you went back and watched film in this last game, did you see the effort go away at all in the second half? Did you see the no. expectation? What did you see at film? No. What I saw on video, first of all, to answer your question, you asked me after the game that I didn't understand where you're coming from. I didn't take it in a bad way. You said we went away from the option. It's called triple option. And what happened was they did a good job of taking away the quarterback and pitch, and Peyton did a great job of reading the give. So if you notice, we had a lot more gives in the second half off the triple option. And, and, and for the footnote, Peyton read it correctly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I saw from the first half to the second half was execution. Uh, I didn't see execution offensively with certain blocks, you know, uh, certain runs hitting certain holes, throwing the ball at certain places, receivers not getting open. Defensively, I saw guys out of their gaps. I saw guys not wrapping up on their tackles, and <clears throat> it was the execution of it that happened. Their effort was outstanding. Mm -hmm. They played, because um, Flip, they go back to the fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter, it went back, back to an even game. If not, we had a little bit of an edge. Um, and they didn't sub their ones out. So it wasn't an effort thing, it was an execution thing. 
Can you just describe what having a weapon like Dion does offensively and on special teams uh, for this team specifically? Yeah, it adds spark. He, not only does he add talent, um, he adds energy. Um, and I think what happens is I've noticed over time when I've been around great kickoff return and punt returners in my career, it adds an extra boost of confidence for the people blocking for them because they, their attitude is, hey, if we get this block, we're going to spring this guy. And, you know, um, that's what's great about team sport. So I think his energy and his talent level raises um, the special teams and their effort on kickoff and punt return, for example. On the offensive side of the ball, you know, you design ways, going back to your question, your question, of getting your playmakers the ball. And when Dion's one of your playmakers, we look and decide how are we gonna get the ball to Dion, how are we gonna get to Caitlin, how are we gonna get to Malik, how are we gonna get it to Tyler, how are we gonna get to Jalen? You know, we try to design ways to get it to those certain people with matchups and schemes. <clears throat> He's obviously become, I'm sure, in a couple of years, a s much smarter player. But when he's just kind of freestyling on a return, what what kind of skills does he demonstrate? I mean, is is that a skill, just the ability to, you know, in the moment, change things up? Well, I, I think it's twofold. I think one, seriously, Kramer does a good job of design, and and we educate him on where it's going to hit and where it should hit. Um, and I use the word should because it, life doesn't always go that way. Um, so what makes it a returner special then is instincts got to take over. Instincts got to take over. And he has great instinct, instinctive instincts out there of where to go. And then he has the God-given ability with the elusiveness to have people miss him on the open spaces.